Hey, it's Liz, and uh, I just wanted to talk about why I take lithium. And the reason I want to talk about it is because it has kind of a bad rap. Um, and I think this is really unfair. So here's my understanding of, of why people think negatively about lithium. Uh, one, it, when it was first introduced for a long time, it was like way overprescribed. So people were just like ill with the side effects all the time. And the side effects can be, um, if you're on way too high of a dose, the side effects are pretty bad. Like you're dizzy and you can't think and you bloat it and you gain weight and you don't feel like yourself, whatever, you know. Um, thinking has changed though over the last whatever, like hundred years that people have been using lithium for bipolar disorder and a few other things. And now the dose is titrated really carefully. And if you get a good prescriber, they can work with you about finding, you know, what kind of dose within the range of what's considered um, therapeutic, what, what therapeutic dose is, is right for you. So I tend to skew on the lower side, although I am due for being checked and readjusted. So another reason it gets a bad rap is because you have to do these blood draws. And I think in particular, prescribers who have many incentives from large pharmaceutical companies, they will tell you that it's the most horrible thing in the world. You have to have blood draws, you know, every week or every month for the rest of your life or something. And it's this huge deal and inconvenience. Um, if you're terrified of needles, I can see why that might be a real reason. You know, you just don't need that much extra stress. But, you know, if you're like a normal person about needles, it's, I mean, it's not fun. I don't enjoy blood draws, but... Um, it's really not that big of a deal. It's just really the first couple of months where you have to go in a lot. And unless something really weird is happening with your metabolism, it just kind of evens out. The reason they do blood draws is because you basically develop a tolerance to it really fast. So they start you at a really small dose and they kind of build up until you're at a point that is where you want to be. And that takes... Um, like six months to a year, at least in my experience. Um, but again, those those blood draws are more and more spaced out as you go because it's sort of like a, a logarithmic curve. So it's like the, um, you know, the amount you're taking and the amount that's showing up in your blood level kind of goes up really high at first and then it just evens out. So it's, it's really not a big deal. After the first year, I only get a blood draw like once a year and it's just sort of like, just to make sure everything's fine or whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't think that should be a huge deterrent for most people. Um, and it's, again, it's really hyped up by these, these drug companies because they want you to take their much more expensive, much more, um, what's the word? Uh, I want to say artificial, that's not quite it. Um, synthetic. They're, they're highly synthetic new drugs that have way more side effects. Some of them have deadly side effects. Um, they're not as well studied. They're, you know... And my experiences with all the other drugs that they had to... They had me take was that I had a very intense physical reaction to them in my liver or somewhere else. Um, and I think I'm just really sensitive like that, but still that seems like not a good sign in general. Like, yeah. And you know, again, none of these drugs have really been around anywhere near as long as lithium. So people don't know as much about it. A lot of the research on lithium um, really has just been so a lot of the good news about lithium has just been coming out in the last few years. And if you have a prescriber who's either bought out by pharmaceutical companies 
or and or who isn't keeping up to date on the research, they might not even realize that there's a lot of things that people used to be worried about lithium, but aren't actually anything to worry about. For instance, I took lithium throughout my pregnancy. It was no big deal. It had just come out um, in the research in the year before I got pregnant, <laughs> thankfully, that, um, that lithium is in fact safe. It takes a really long time to get data on whether or not medications are safe during pregnancy because of ethics reasons. They don't want to do a big double blind study of pregnant women um, because you're kind of gambling with literally with, with people's lives, with babies. So um, they don't do that. So they have to wait until sort of results are recorded and trickled in as women choose to go on medication and kind of see what happens. Um, but the new research says, yeah, it's safe. There's a few things you need to check for. You do need to get blood draws throughout pregnancy. Um, there is like this one heart defect that you have to watch out for. And she, at four months, I think I did a echocardiogram to make sure that the heart was developing okay and it, and it was if it hadn't been we would have reassessed the options but um yeah another thing that is great about lithium i think um see there's actually a <laughs> what was i gonna say there's like a bunch of things that i like about lithium i mean for one um if you're on a, the correct dose for you it, it really doesn't have any of that feeling of like losing your personality or losing your spark. I mean, you're not going to be manic all the time anymore. So that can be um, challenging to deal with if you're used to always having that sort of manic spontaneity and creativity and energy. But um, it does not feel like being a zombie totally dissociated from your body or, or something like that, which has been my experience with antipsychotics, um, going on them for a, a long-term use or for, um, some of these other, uh, mood stabilizers that I've been on. It's, yeah, it's just, it's, it's very safe. There's very few problems if you're at the correct dose. Um, the biggest issue that I have is that it did seem to cause me to just put on a little weight, um, indefinitely, uh, and it's like, it's not, it's not that much. It's, it's, to me, it's a hundred percent worth it. Um, and I know that that can be a much bigger issue for some of the other mood stabilizers. So I don't, I don't know, whatever. It also can make you a bit thirsty. It can make you retain water. You know, it's, it's not that big of a deal to me. Anyway, um, I'm sure there's there's other side effects that you can have, um, and it varies from person to person. But for me, it's pretty much nothing. And the actual chemical lithium carbonate is a mineral that you can find in the ground, which I mean, I know automatically doesn't make it safe. I mean, mercury sulfate is a minimum. Oh, I actually, I forget if mercury sulfate is safe or not, but you know, like poisonous mercury metal is also found in the earth and it's not safe, but, um, I still feel a lot more comfortable taking sort of a simple salt than I do taking some of these mystery compounds that were created in labs that we still don't understand the effects that they're having on the brain and body. They just seem to work. That, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't work for me. And from just, you know, sort of anecdotally, the people I know who are on non-lithium medication for bipolar disorder are usually on a ton of different drugs, um, and are always having to change their meds. And, you know, I just, once I got on lithium, that's the only drug I use. Uh, regularly and it's just not been a, an issue it's not been a big problem you know I'm trying to think if there's anything else um yeah I'm just 
I'm just really about it. It really seems to... I mean, it's the only thing that I've experienced that really damps down mania without making me feel like a shell of a person. So, um... Yeah. It's underrated. IMO. Okay. I'll talk to you later.